What's the difference between my love and God's love? Isn't it enough for us just to love each other as we know how? Why should that matter to me? These questions and more we'll be exploring in today's edition of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. We're on episode number 18, What Kind of Love Is This? Welcome to Word Search, where this is a place to search God's Word and a time to allow God's Word to search us. Here we encourage godly character development that stimulates seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness. All this so that we can be informed and transformed in our prayer and practice. For here at Word Search, we find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his glory. On Word Search today, first of all, previously what we've seen in our series of studies on God's fit body plan, then we'll have our scripture reading, and after our scripture is read, we'll consider the differences between our love and God's love before exploring a bit further what that perfect love of God is, before rounding up with some summary notes and giving you a hint of what to expect next time. Previously on Word Search, we've been exploring God's fit body plan. And God's fit body plan is based on our understanding that every believer is a member of the body of Christ and that as such they belong in genuine Christian fellowship with other believers. And part of God's body plan is for us all to function recognizing that we are members of of the body of Christ. We went through a series then of exploring how God has deliberately chosen key bodybuilders to help to equip the saints for the work of ministry. In the last episode, we considered carefully how those five bodybuilders work together to help the body to grow up into the character of Christ. We saw how the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the shepherding and the teaching how they all complement each other so that we're really aware of what it is to take in God's word and then live it out for God's glory so that we can mature and grow up to be a lot more like God and we also looked at how that is based on the gospel and how that gospel sees us where we're saved from what we're saved by and what we're saved for and that then gave us the basis to understand how important it is to realize why these bodybuilders are given to us to help us to work out the life, the ministry, and the power of Jesus Christ. If you want to find out more about the previous episode and indeed the series on God's bodybuilders, click here to find out more on a playlist that we set up for you so that you can go through that series and be updated on what's taken place before. The last thing that we said in that particular episode was the importance of love in it all. And love is so crucial that we're now going to take some time to explore just what kind of love this is. And to help us, the basis for our studies will be these two chapters in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, and Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. These key verses will be the base from which we will explore. Let's have a reading of those two particular scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19 says as follows. I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is their breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 4, 15-16 then goes on to say, 
Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I want us to notice the focus of love in both of these scriptures in terms of knowing that love and then knowing that a functioning body grows full of that love. Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for your spirit that inspires us to seek you all the more. At this time, open our eyes and our understanding to appreciate just what kind of love you have given to us so that we can live out that love for your honour and your glory. Help us now as we look to you and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let's explore then together something about a contrast between the love that we're aware of and God's kind of love. Okay, so when we think about love, our kind of love, there are so many different aspects of it and so many different kinds of our love. Consider, first of all, the parental love, or especially that maternal love that we think of so often. Or maybe even the love that we experience if we have siblings or the family love that we have between us as cousins. And then you look at that kind of love that is um, best seen in the relationships between us as friends. So we may not be related by blood, but there's that kind of friendship love that's going on. And then obviously we're aware of the romantic love or the erotic love that brings two people together in a way that's clearly not a familial kind of love at all, but something a lot more physically intimate and bringing on all the heart swell and all those emotions. And then there's that kind of love that you may not have considered carefully before, but it's the kind of love that is developed when a group of people come together for a particular challenge or a particular task that they're called to do together. And such is the intensity of the experience that it, it brings about such a camaraderie that whenever they see each other, there's a connection there that's not just about them being friends, it's about them having shared experiences that bonds them together. And then, of course, you have the fanatical love, that kind of love of such a devotion and an affection towards something that there's a clinging support of something. So whether it's the fandom that we see in, in science fiction or in television programs, or it's the fandom that we see with personalities and sports, that in itself could be seen as a type of love. So these types of love are things that we're very much aware of. And let me state clearly here and now, I'm not saying that these types of love are bad. No, I'm just suggesting that when we hear scripture describe love and scripture points to these kinds of love as well and affirms a lot of them in, in beautiful ways because these come from God. And yet what Paul is talking about in the scripture is his desire that we should aspire to know the love of Christ. That is to know the love of God. And so what I'm hoping that we can explore in our studies today is God's kind of love and our studies going forward is God's kind of love and that kind of love that we'll be looking at is a kind of love that we particularly see in creation so we'll be exploring what that looks like in a lot more detail we'll be looking carefully at what that sacrificial nature of love is all about the kind of love that would send Jesus to the cross what kind of love is that We'll be looking at the type of love that restores people and forgives people truly, even those that were enemies, that kind of restorative love. We'll be looking as well at the covenantal, faithful kind of love that marks God out, particularly as seen in his relationship with the people of Israel, and how important that kind of love is to see in Jesus expressed to us as well, because this kind of godly love that we're looking at is all connected, and it all aspires to a higher understanding of what really of what love really is when we see that expressed in the lord jesus christ and when we see that that kind of love can be traced all the way through god's relationship with his people and god's word so that's the kind of the plan that we have 
in the coming episodes of Word Search, exploring carefully God's kind of love and seeing how that should impact us in our relationship with others. And to help us with that, I want us to consider carefully what 1 John chapter 4 has to say about that love. So, 1 John chapter 4, in particular in verses 7 to 12, John says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Why this particular chapter and why this particular section of scripture fascinates me as a good point to start our exploration of love is what it says about God's kind of love. So, first of all, it establishes that God's people put on display God's nature. So God's people in their interactions with each other clearly should reflect how they are born of God and know God because they love each other and they know that that love comes from God because God is love. So God's nature is on display through God's people. But as well as that, what's fascinating is how God's nature is first on display in Jesus Christ, especially when it comes to the community of those who have placed their faith in him and how that love has been presented to us in two ways. So the first aspect that I want us to consider when it comes to God's love is how we live because of the Son, that God's love is expressed in sending his Son so that we can live through him. And then not only that, but we see that the dynamic isn't that we loved God first, but that God loved us first and did what was necessary so that the gap that was made because of sin between us and God could be bridged between us and God through what Jesus has done. So that a bridge has been built and now there's life available to us because of the love of God as seen through Jesus Christ. All of that to say is that we don't love because we love. We love because he loved. And he loved in a particular way that expresses his nature that now says to us that we are responsible for displaying the kind of love of God in action. That should be evident in our interactions. That should be clear that we're not just loving each other with regular love. We're loving each other with the love of God. And that's why I love if God loved us in this kind of way, that's why we ought to love one another. And that means that we go back to what Paul is saying in terms of investing time, investing our hearts and investing our lives to discover what kind of love this is. We're given a hint of what kind of love this is in what John says here in John chapter 4. And I encourage you to read the rest of John chapter 4 and don't worry, we'll be coming back to hear more of what John has to say in this particular chapter in a few episodes coming later. So listen up for that in later episodes because John has more to say about what this kind of love is. But even here already, we should get a good indication of what kind of love we're looking at here when we're exploring God's kind of love. This is a love that has allowed us to live through Christ. This is the love that has bridged what we couldn't bridge ourselves. And so this is the kind of love that invites us to experience the love and share the love with those that are called to be a part of the family of God. So based on that, here are some key takeaways that I want us to bear in mind when it comes to considering what we've seen so far in the love of God. 
First of all, it's clear that the body of Christ operates by God's love. That should be indisputable. The body of Christ cannot function without love. The apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the shepherding and the teaching are motivated by love. So that when we see the life of Christ in action, we're seeing the life of love. And this love isn't the regular kind of love. So again, we're not dismissing the love of a parent or the love of families or the love that brings two lovers together. No, we're not dismissing that. We're just saying that this love is even greater. Indeed, this love is perfect love. The perfect love that we receive from God, that we see in Christ Jesus, that we embrace and we experience. This love is different. This is the love that Paul wants us to grow in knowing all the more as we know Jesus Christ. The more we know Jesus is the more that we're supposed to be expressing the life and the love of Jesus. And so that's why it's crucial for us to invest our time in knowing that kind of love. Because as we've seen with John, God displays his nature as love. God is love. And we see that love in the works of who Jesus is. So our challenge is, in the light of all of that, what can we do to explore this love with others? This is not a solo activity. This isn't just something that we sit and we look at a book and we read it and we study it and we tick off notes and all of that. And that's that's it. The challenge that we have is to see how we can explore that kind of love with others in genuine Christian fellowship. That's our challenge. So in the light of all that we've shared on this episode of Word Search, there are some key things that I want us to take on board in terms of prayer points going forward the first one i want us to consider carefully is our need to praise god for his perfect love it's all well and good as having experienced all kinds of love before but now because of jesus we have access to this perfect love let's praise god for that and then let's also go on to thank god that that love is seen in jesus christ the real man who lived on earth a real life that expressed this love in action a love that we are called to follow so let's thank god that we have a living example to follow of what that love uh, looks like and on the basis of that let's go on to ask god for the desire to pursue his kind of love it's a commitment it's a devotion it's us committing ourselves to Not just accepting the regular love, but understanding that God's kind of love is perfect and we are perfected as we love others with this kind of love. In fact, that love is perfected as we carry it out with each other. And so let's seek God for opportunities to exercise this love more and more. Now be wary when we're asking these things in our prayer points. The deliberate issue here at Word Search is these are meant to inform and transform our prayer and practice and as we communicate with God these kind of things we will be challenged Um, but the whole point is that if we're going to grow to know this love we've got to be open to seek those opportunities and then put them into action so it's about praising God for the perfect love thanking God for the love seen in Jesus asking God for the desire to pursue his kind of love and seeking those opportunities to exercise that love and then celebrating God that we are the beloved in his son by his spirit. That's something worth celebrating because that says something about who we are now and what we have to look forward to when Jesus returns. Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, we'll be moving on uh, to episode number 19. And in episode number 19, we'll be exploring love from the beginning so i encourage you to join us for the next episode of word search where we'll be seeing god's kind of love that started right from the start right from the beginning we'll be exploring that together so join us for that in the meantime thank you so much for investing your time in word search on this occasion please remember to like this video and then go on after liking it to sharing it with your loved ones and your friends and your family you can go on and do that it's free of charge as i understand it we're not charging you for that on this occasion and then go on to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already your subscription 
makes a difference. As you go on to subscribe, uh, please remember to turn the notification bell on. You should see a tick once you've done so, and that should mean that you will get more notifications of whenever there are new episodes of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. Word Search is a production of Zion Awake Ministries, and so we would appreciate it here at Zam if you would consider supporting us. Details on how you can do that will be found in the description below. Your support makes the difference truly in these situations. Every penny, every prayer, every contribution helps. So please consider doing so. And remember here at Word Search, we're here to find treasure in God's Word so that we can be hearers and doers of that Word for His glory. Until next time on Word Search, God richly bless you and those that you care about. Thank you once more. Shalom.